Bravery, victory, history, tragedy, scenery. If you like your sporting drama played out in the most dramatic of natural settings, the Tour de France is your event. There are greater moments perhaps stored nowhere but the memories of those who saw them or helped create them. We can only bring you the greatest moments that television has been around to record and file in the collective memory. We've got 20 of them to get through and only an hour including adverts to do it, so let's get going. Jamaluddin Abdu Jafarov, the duration of his career, the nine most terrifying syllables in cycling. His nicknames were telling, the Tashkent Terror, the Uzbek Express, or behind his back, just Abdu Pushimov. Abdu had the most homicidal sprinting style in tour history, elbows out, weaving from side to side. The mystery was how he could put so much energy into lateral motion and still win. He won stage one of the 1991 tour, then stage four, forcing an outrage, Johan Museo into the barriers. Abdu Jafarov will take it right on the line. It's going to be very close. He may have gone too soon because Museo is trying to get too bouncing off the side of the barriers. But you'll never beat Abdu Jafarov. I've seen him do that before in the middle place and win a stage. And as he hits the line this time, I think Museo will complain. It's always the same with him. It's not fair. Something must be stopped. It. Otherwise, uh, something, something happens regrettable. What happened, happened on the Champs-Élysées, with Abdu Jafarov wearing the green jersey of the best sprinter and looking to cap his tour with a show of dominance on the final stage. As they line up for the finish now, the uh, Panasonic, Suckers and Carreras look like fighting out the finish here now. And as they start, now Jan Shaw on the right, on the far left of our picture is Abdu Jafarov. See how much room they give him, because once his elbows start working, Olaf Ludwig takes him on nicely. Oh, and he's gone! Abdul Jafarov has gone and taken out, uh, uh, Sean has gone down with him as well, as the stage has been won there by, I think it was Dmitry Konishev, who crossed the line in first place. And you know, I'll have to wait to see what happened there, but it looked to me as though Abdul Jafarov caused a crash himself and went down uh, by himself, Paul. He actually touched one of the barriers at the side of the road, I think, there. He was trying to come up the inside, and he just couldn't control it, and he went down. But let's not forget, he still got across the line. 20 minutes later, he did, although his bike had to be wheeled over for him. Cut, concussed, and with a broken collarbone, Abdu went straight to hospital. The tour's only green jersey winner not to stand on the podium in Paris. Miguel Indurain didn't really do moments. He won by sheer relentlessness, five years in succession. And he generally did it the same way, win the time trials, watch in the mountains. Including prologues, the great Spaniard racked up 10 time trial victories in the tour, the finest of them in 1992, when he destroyed a field containing three tour champions, Greg LeMond, Laurent Fignon and Stephen Roach, and the world champion, Gianni Bugno. So, Miguel Indurain, winner of both of the time trials one year ago, is now on his way in the city of Luxembourg. And from this moment on, for him in this year's tour, every second will count. As it turned out, Indurain wasn't bothering with seconds. After 37 of the 65 kilometres, he was already two minutes up on the next fastest man. This is Miguel Indurain coming up towards the line, and this could be a tremendous ride because he is caught and passed. Laurent Fignon, I wonder when that last happened in the Tour de France, if it ever did indeed. Look at this time by Miguel Indurain, the best man on the clock. He started very early this morning, Indurain's teammate, Dillas Cuevas, but this time is going to annihilate at that time. Miguel Indurain laying the foundations, I think, today for victory in the Tour de France because he has come with a tremendous time. Fignon will not let him go. One hour, 19 to 31 for Miguel Indurain. And he caught Laurent Fignon as well. And look at this, mobbed by the crowd at 49 kilometres an hour. It wasn't the fastest time trial in history. Mick himself went faster 11 days later. But the time gaps it produced over his rivals were huge. Over four minutes on men like Le Monde and Roach. And the 92 Tour was effectively over on stage nine. He's uh, one leg above everybody else. I can't, I don't know how he does it. I could never do that.
Lance Armstrong's tour career was pretty much made for television, and in 2001 he took both acting and directing credits. By stage 10 to Alpe d'Huez, the defending champion was short of healthy teammates and hatched a plan to trick his great rival Jan Ulrich into doing all the work up until the final climb. Knowing that team managers study the live race coverage on TV and the support cars, Armstrong played dead, or at least sick, riding at the back on the Col de la Madeleine and grimacing for the cameras. The order went out, Telecom upped the pace to try to shake him, and in doing so, pulled all the way to Alpe d'Huez, burning energy while Armstrong drafted in their slipstream. When the race hit the Alp, Ulrich had three tired teammates, Armstrong had one and looked pretty hale for a sick man. When the time came, it was Ulrich and the others who were given an examination. Armstrong now for the first time today is looking comfortable, he's come into his terrain, Vinokurov, boom, he's out of the group right now, Telecom are losing their men one after the other, they are dropping like flies, this is where you have to race alone and Armstrong's gone. A big move by Lance this and no reply coming at all from Jan Ulrich, he took a look straight into the eyes there of Jan Ulrich and said well here I go, are you coming or not, and the answer is not. Armstrong rode away, won the stage, and essentially the tour with a show of strength, both physical and psychological. He took a minute 59 from Ulrich in second place, and 10 seconds more from Spain's Joseba Bellocchi in third, establishing 10 stages in advance, the order of the top three in Paris. As titles go, the sting was already taken, so the Armstrong myth machine settled on the look. And of course, everybody is guessing, you know, what, what is the look, what was it, was it bravado, was it tactics? Uh, was it a question? Um, and some people have even criticized it, saying that it, it was a little bit in your face. I, I did want to see his face, I wanted to see his mouth, I wanted to see the expression. Uh, but I also wanted to look back down the road and see who else was there. Following his 1988 tour win, Spain's Pedro Delgado arrived at the tour in Luxembourg the following year to defend his title against Greg LeMond and Laurent Fignon. Except that he forgot to actually arrive the time he was due to start the prologue anyway. Gaps between the big... But by the time Delgado pitched up, start ramping up... After the Tour de France, Delgado now will have to come out to riders in a rather fantastic way. Delgado comes to the line then. Pushing him well. Oh, two minutes late. Me, unfortunately, it, it was true. I had lost some time, but it's my fault. It's there is no other explanation. It's totally my fault. The 1998 Tour de France started in Dublin with Chris Boardman's third prologue, winning five years and almost ended 17 stages later without ever reaching Paris. Drugs have been found in a car being driven across the Belgian border into France by a staff member of the Festina team. A small story at first that grew into a daily series.